So this is the bucket I was talking about where I um put this into. I shouldn't say the bucket's too small, I just haven't got enough sand. <laughs> That's the sand I've got there, this beach sand. So All I do is this not exactly rocket science is very what's that? So that's what I was saying about not having enough sand, it doesn't really do need to get some more. I was tempted to go get some. Right, so I went and got some more sand. Now I can actually do this the way I'm supposed to. So now I've got that all packed up around the pouring cup. The sand's a wee bit moist, but it's not so moist that it's going to be dangerous to pour the molten metal into. It's just damp enough to hold it together. So now that's all prepared to be um, poured. Let's sit it outside and melt down some metal. So this here is my furnace that I use to um, melt down aluminium. It's obviously a you know, old propane bottle. But I cut the lid off and um, filled it up with this refractory type stuff which I made from perlite and um, refractory cement. It has that old paint tin in the middle there to stop me from damaging the um, refractory stuff because it's actually hasn't it's worked but it's fragile keeps the heat it keeps the heat in that's for sure but I like to grab this plate onto the bottom of the lid because that kept on cracking and yeah, nothing pretty but it works the burner is homemade as well it's just like a giant Bunsen burner really it has a really, um, you can see it in there it's got a um, MIG welding tip for a jet it's just um, threaded into this piece of rod here and then goes through the pipe and over to um, this regulator here which is actually an acetylene regulator but it fits a propane bottle and it works fine so don't see why not this here is my um, crucible which I, um, which I made out of 25mm flat bar, 25 by 3 flat bar and welded it all together, it took a while but I had that stock and lying around so I just used it and made that so that fits down in there fits down inside there like that and the flame shoots around, spins around and out the hole at the top so I like that now it on top and let it heat up. Might chuck some scrap in it. This piece is from old castings that I've done. Let them melt down and once they've melted down then I can add the bigger pieces from my last casting or I might use some other scrap that I have. This metal scrap that I've lying around. Which that stuff's actually better quality than what I use for that. So what I'm making these hubs for is this drift strike here. 
which you can see in one of my other videos that I've just put up before this one. So it's going to be kind of two series going at once. I'm going to have this build and then my casting stuff. Hopefully be uploading a few of them videos sometime soon. The reason why I have this rag stuff in here is that it was drawing far too much air in. The space around the burner was allowing it to suck a lot of air. And if you turn the pressure up on that regulator, it just the flames went out. There was too much air rushing through. So for quite a while, I've ever touched the outside of this without it feeling any, apart from around this joint. But there's not a great deal of heat. I'm running that at 15 pound. I was wondering why this was taking forever to heat up. Like it was just sitting there. You know, not as loud as what it normally is, it doesn't seem to be as much gas flowing. So I was turning the pressure off a wee bit, then I heard this big bike, kind of like a pop. Because obviously the jet was a wee bit blocked, because now it's, now it's doing what it's supposed to do. So I've got the crucible completely full of the aluminium now, as you can see. Just thing I need to get a wee bit hotter. It seems kind of um, uh, it's getting better, but before it's, it didn't seem like it was quite hot enough. So there's the final product, well not final, but what came out of the sand. It's not the prettiest looking thing when you compare it to that one, but you know, it'll work.